Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are talking about the 15 million new shorts, institutions accumulating, the 1.8 trillion FTDs affecting shorts, and many more in this video. So we're taking a look at this. LOL, AMC adjusted short interest is nuts. Don't tell me they're covered. They just open new ones lower, which isn't the smartest idea. So if you take a look at this graph right now, you can see that we are at the highest we've ever been in comparison to the previous few years. This is in comparison all the way from January of 2021. You can see where we're sitting at at 50 million. Now, the point I want to be making here and that we should be looking at is understanding the new short positions that have been open. So we already knew that the existing short positions obviously haven't been closed. But what we also need to talk about is how they are opening up even more short positions as of right now. If we take a look at this right now, what we can see is obviously previously we talked about how the short interest has gone up, how the days to cover has gone up, the shares on loan has gone up, the utilization has gone up. So overall, what we can see is obviously the overall short exposure has increased. Now, going back to this, this means that again, shorts are creating new position now this is obviously extremely good for us and extremely bad for the shorts because you have to understand that right now of where we are at 280 again it is the low price for amc but what every ape what every retail investors understand is that that is not the true price it's on the fair value and it is definitely not reflecting what amc should be and again we've seen how again due to uh, glitches in the algorithms glitches in the systems when they have exposed the real price we've also seen what they're trading for amc in the dark pool so if they are creating short positions at the price of two dollars and 81 and at any time amc bounces to its true reflective price then you guys can understand how the new positions they have just created will come back to bite them and so again it's understanding that because now they are creating even more short position at these lower prices that they are even more scared for the price to jump up previously when they created short positions at 72 dollars they were scared Scared that if AMC were to go to 100 because the effect it will do, they were scared that AMC go into 150 and the effects that they will do. But now, if they're creating short positions at $2.81, then they will be extremely scared of what AMC will do when it goes to $20, $30, $40, and let alone when we can go to the even higher numbers of a thousand, ten thousand, and obviously even higher. And so you have to understand that the longer we are seeing the short interest for AMC to increase right now, it means that they are creating even more um, short positions as of in terms of the current price. And again, that means more margin, more exposure, and more risk for the short sellers and that's why they're doubling down every single day the situation becomes bigger and bigger every single day for the short sellers and so it makes sense to why they need to suppress the price furthermore what you guys can see is this so previously in our previous video we talked about how what adam aaron said in terms of bankruptcy is not going to happen inconceivable is what he said you guys can see from this 2021 versus 2024 nothing has changed the, con con the company continues to survive while the apes continue to hold don't be surprised when the markup period relax happens in a few months sit back relax and enjoy the film and this is in comparison to something we've seen in 2021 on monday the company announced it had secure enough financing to remain open and operational deep into 2021 this means that any talk of an imminent bankruptcy for amc is completely off the table and the reason why I want to talk about this is understanding how staying alive is extremely vital for AMC. And what we can see is how Adam Aaron has delivered. What he talked about was how they were being able to be operating going into 2021 and avoiding bankruptcy. And that's exactly what they've done. So now that he has made the same statement saying we're going to go through 2024, we're going to have a smooth sailing and we're going to see a robust 2025 and 2026, then I definitely do have high hopes for what's about to happen in the long projections for AMC. But more importantly, it's understanding that by not going bankrupt, it means the play is still alive. And you guys can see when AMC first released these piece of news about avoiding bankruptcy in 2021, about not going anywhere near bankruptcy in 2021, you can see how the shorts panicked. You can see how they drastically increased their short positions, how they drastically had to make more news, um, negative news on AMC, how they had to create more synthetics, how they spend more money on pushing AMC down and how that has lasted. So by what we have right now in 2024 of not going into bankruptcy and again going to 2025 and 2026 at an even bigger improvement you guys can imagine what's going to happen now when shorts have to spend even more money they have to suppress the price even more create more synthetics and again 
by creating more synthetics, it just means that when the squeeze happens, we are going to get paid even more. Furthermore, what we can see is this. We can visibly see institutions accumulating at these prices, but retail should sell. Nah, I'm good. I'll follow the money. Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. It's a naked short. If they've already covered slash closed or if people sold, they wouldn't keep talking about AMC. And that's extremely true. If they already covered and they already closed, why are they still creating new short positions like we've seen? And why is it at an all time high at 50 million? And why is it for the past few days that it's increasing? But furthermore, what we can also talk about is if AMC were to go bankrupt, and again, understanding that institutions were accumulating before there was news about um, 2024, about what Adam Aaron had said, because remember that this is very recent in the past few days, but institutions has, has been accumulating for the past few quarters. So if the talks about AMC going bankrupt, about not being profitable, about not being a good investment is true, why is it that so many institutions are buying into AMC and are willing to be holding AMC at a much higher price than the current market price? Because firstly, they understand that the long projection for AMC is extremely good. Secondly, they understand that the MOAS for AMC is going to happen and that they will make billions of money from it. And finally, they also understand is that they know the real price of AMC is way higher. And that's why they're comfortable in holding AMC at such a high price, even though what we can see is $2.80. But they know that AMC is worth way more than that as of right now, and that they have the access to the real price. That's why they're not worried. That's why they're not selling AMC. But that's why they want you to sell your AMC shares so that they can get a hold of it. Furthermore, you can see, again, what we talked about, why do they keep talking about AMC? You guys, you guys can see this. Lackluster theater attendance makes it doubtful that AMC stock can meet Wall Street's expectations. Now, what's funny about this is that recently we've actually talked about a news which talks about how box office is actually improving and that's why you should invest in Cinemark. And that was what that piece of news is. But yet, they changed the narrative in just a few days later to talk about lackluster theater attendance makes it doubtful that AMC stock can we meet Wall Street's expectations. So you guys can see how they changed the narrative depending on the stock that they are talking about. Both stocks are in the same industry, affected by the same factors yet when we're looking at the same factors it's good for cinemark but bad for amc and when you put those two together it obviously doesn't make sense so it makes it doesn't make sense why they constantly talk about amc if there is nothing to do with the fact that they want you to sell your shares so that they can buy into amc furthermore you guys can see this shouldn't i buy the bottom and sell the top yes just not amc the amc originally hit all-time low before running to its all-time high yes but it won't happen again didn't you say amc will be bankrupt years ago yes isn't the balance sheet improving yeah but and you can this is exactly what's happening the retail investors know everything about AMC. They know that, again, AMC is a good buy. They've seen the fact that AMC ran to an all-time high when it hit an all-time low. And they also know that AMC isn't going to bankruptcy. Now, we've knew AMC wasn't going to bankruptcy from um, a long time ago, from a long time now. But again, we've obviously had the confirmation as we see Adam Aaron say it. And so by understanding this, by understanding that AMC is a good long projection, what we have right now is a solid foundation base of investors buying into AMC. And that itself is the best sentiment we can get, knowing that people won't just sell their shares of AMC during panic. And again, let these shorts profit and try and get out of the situation. Now, this is what I'm thinking is probably one of the most important news that you guys have to understand, which I think will be very pivotal in the future. So there's now been $1.8 trillion in treasury settlement failures at the DTCC in 2024, bringing the daily settlement failure average to $26.9 billion. So why is this important? Well, the reason why this is important is to actually talk about what is happening um, with DTTC and again, the correlation to shorts. So as a reminder, the US Treasury settlement failures at the DTCC are facilitated by the Fixed Income Clearing Corporation, FICC, a DTCC subsidiary whose simultaneously covered clearing agency, self-regulatory organization, and central clearing counterparty, as well as the sole central counterparty to process trade in securities issued by the federal government. So what we can see here is the FICC. Now, the reason why this is important is if you guys remember, what we have seen recently is how 
Credit Suisse has become a participant in the FICC, meaning that they gain access to more liquidity. But the problem that the FICC is meeting right now, what they're facing, is the fact that we're seeing over $1.8 trillion dollars in treasury, treasury settlement failures and so what we have right now is FICC accepting Credit Suisse as a counterparty to give them more liquidity but on the other hand FICC are also seeing problems in liquidity themselves so if they're facing liquidity problems and they're trying to help out other firms with liquidity problems you guys can see how this isn't going to pair well so what we're likely to see in the very near future is obviously the firms who are trying to escape by accessing liquidity from the government to obviously fail and what we can see is understanding that again they can run but they can never hide and that it will come to a time where they have to pay up where their liquidity runs out and they will have to cover anyways thanks for watching i'll catch you guys next time